In the last three videos, videos number 107, 108, and 109, we looked at a couple examples that I made up of one with a bond bought at a premium and another one with a bond bought at a discount and creating amortization uh, tables for those bonds showing how the outstanding balance or book value of the bond changes over time as well as the amount of the coupon payments that go toward interest and principal reduction in the case of a bond bought at a premium and you might say principal repossessed in the case of a bond bought at a discount. We didn't have really good exercises from our main books here, Broverman's book and Kellison's book that were like that so I made up examples but now we want to go and look at an example in Kellison's book 7.18 of an exercise and go ahead and do that and we're going to use the knowledge that we developed uh, in these last three videos. So you're for sure going to want to watch video 107 if you haven't watched it yet and I'll put a link up to it here right in the upper right corner. In 7.18 we're going to find the total amount for the accumulation of discount for a bond sold at a discount for the first four years of a 10-year bond uh, based on a given yield rate and amount of accumulation of discount in the next to the last payment. Now that sounds like it might be kind of difficult and if, it, if this is new to you it probably is but hopefully if you've had enough practice with bonds it's not going to be too bad. So here is the problem statement. We've got a 10-year bond, some annual coupons, so that would be 20 coupons, bought at a discount so the semi-annual coupon rate would be less than the yield rate. They tell you what the yield rate is convertible semi-annually, which would mean um, a 4.5% rate per half year. Evidently, the coupon rate, which you're not told, is less than that. You don't really need to worry about it, I guess. If the amount for the accumulation of discount in the next to the last coupon payment is $8, find the total amount for the accumulation of discount during the first four years in the bond amortization schedule. Sounds pretty tough. First four years, the first eight payments, how much goes toward the accumulation of discount? Now again, the bond here is being sold at a discount, so the coupon payments um, are kind of low. They're not enough to cover the interest on the bond. The yield is higher than the yield rate is higher than the coupon rate. And therefore, the balance on the, bond go, on the bond goes up over time. That is the accumulation of the discount. Um, I've been using notation in the last three videos consistent with what Broverman does. And in particular, I've been focusing on the situation where the uh, face or par value F is the same as the redemption value. And in those videos, we looked at some formulas in that case for the outstanding balance or book value at time T, for the interest paid at time T, for the coupon payment at time t, and for, at least in the case of bonds bought at a premium, the principal repaid at time t, and again, if it's bought at a discount, you could imagine this is principal repossessed. That's probably not the best terminology, but you could think of it that way. And I'm going to go ahead and write down those formulas to remind you of them, um, but then I'm going to write down other formulas that are related to these formulas that involve the what happens if the bond is not salt um, redeemable at par if F does not equal C and it's really more consistent with the notation in Kellison's book where C the redemption value is used and G the modified coupon rate is used. But anyway the formulas uh, from the last few videos for the outstanding balance or book value at time T is the face value plus the face value F times the quantity R minus J where R is the uh, periodic, usually semi-annual uh, coupon rate, and J is the semi-annual yield rate, times A N minus T at yield rate J, so that would be, again, your usual present value of annuity immediate with payments of 1, N minus T payments at yield rate J. This is the formula that we used when T is 0, when you have the initial price, this is N instead of N minus T. The interest at time t is the yield rate per half year in this case times the outstanding balance at the previous time and through a little bit of algebra you can simplify that to f times j plus f times in parentheses r minus j times in parentheses 1 minus vj to the n minus in parentheses t minus 1 power. That's quite a mouthful. Um, again, watching videos 107 through 109, I talk about these formulas. You'll see them derived, so that would be good to do if you have it. The coupon payments are F times R. KT here is not including the final redemption 
amount. And the principal reduction was f times the quantity r minus j times the same v to the same power there, v to the n minus, in parentheses, t minus 1. Of course, in both of these situations, the, the negative sign could go through the parentheses. You could write it as n minus t plus 1. All right. Well, what do you do if the face value and the redemption value are not the same? Again, Broberman's book assumes they are the same, which is the usual case. Kellison's book is a bit more general. Um, in that situation, you can rewrite all these formulas using C instead of F and using the modified coupon rate, which is defined by the equation FR equals CG. So this is the amount of the coupon. If C is the redemption value, little g, the modified coupon rate, is defined to equal so that C times G equals the coupon amount. Just replace all the F's with C's and replace all the R's with G's and you'll get equations that work even if the bond is not redeemable at par. So again, replace all the F's with C's, replace all the R's with G's, and you will get true equations in that case. And that's what I'm doing here. It's not clear that we're going to need all these equations, but I thought it would be good to review them anyway. And again, look at the last videos to see those. These are more general equations. That will always work. Okay. All right. So as far as solving the problem now, let's write down what we know. Um, Ten-year bond, semi-annual coupon. So n is twenty. Nine percent yield, convertible semi-annually. So the semi-annual yield rate is four point five percent. All right. What do we know? What else do we know? And what do we want to find out? We know the accumulation of discount in the next to the last coupon is eight dollars that is going to be the opposite of this quantity right here this is in the case of a bond bought at a premium this is the principal reduction it's a positive quantity when the bond is bought at a premium it's a negative quantity when the bond is bought at a discount because j will be bigger than r in such a situation um, but we, what we could do here is we could just reverse the j and the r around and set it equal to positive eight and actually i should be thinking of it this way Think of it the more general way. Think of it in terms of C and G instead of F and R. So I'll switch the G and the J around. So I get a quantity that is positive when the bond is bought at a discount. This thing here as a positive quantity will equal positive 8, the accumulation of discount in the next to the last payment. The next to the last payment occurs when T equals N minus 1. So if you replace t with n minus 1 here, t minus 1 is going to be n minus 2. And n minus n minus 2 will be the second power. This is the same thing as vj squared. We do know we can figure out vj. Let's go ahead and write it down. And I'll probably store it in register 0. 1.045 is 1 plus j. Reciprocal, there's vj. 0.9569378. I'll store that in register zero of my calculator. All right. Um, we don't know what C is. We don't know what uh, G is. We do know what J is. It's 0 0.045. I could plug that in here. It's probably not necessary, I'm thinking. Let's just take this equation and solve for C times j minus g by taking 8 and dividing it by v squared. This again is v, so I'm going to square that. That's v squared. 8 divided by that, I can take the reciprocal of that and multiply times 8. This quantity here is 8.7362. Let's go ahead and store that in register 1. That's stored in register 1 now. Maybe we will be able to use it later. So essentially all we've done now is written down what we know and something we can figure out fairly quickly. What do we want to find? Find the total amount for the accumulation of discount in the first four years, the first eight bond uh, coupon payments. Essentially, uh, these things for t equal to um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 added up and with the j, g and j reversed is the thing we want to find. So let's go ahead and write that down. So C times 
switch around the G and the J to get a positive quantity in this situation. And I can really go ahead and write in parentheses right away these to these powers, starting with t equal to 1. When t is 1, that's 0, and my 0 is n, I get vj to the n, n is 20. When t is 2, this is uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, 20 minus 1 is 19. These powers of vj are going to go down by 1, and if I want there to be 8 of them for the first 4 years, the last power of vj is going to be 13th power. Okay, so this is the quantity we want to find. That is going to be the total accumulation amount of accumulation of discount during the first four years. The eight, first four eight, first eight coupon payments. I'm sorry, of this bond. And uh, you could think of this as a finite geometric series with eight terms, leading terms say v to the thirteenth and common ratio v. You could use the formula for that. You could also recognize it as being. Well, if you factor out um, vj to the 12th power, you'd have this, and that is going to be the same as a8j. Okay, so you could recognize it either way, either as a finite geometric series, use the formula for the sum of a finite, finite geometric series, or recognize it if you factor out a v to the 12th as v to the 12th times a8. We know C times J minus G, that's in register 1, it's about 8.7362. Let's figure out these two things. I'll figure out V to the 12th first, and store it in register 2 maybe here. Uh, v again is in register 0 to the 12th power, 0.5896636, I'll store that in register 2. Now let's figure out A8, V again is in register 0. Raise it to the 8th power, subtract from 1, divide by j, 0.045. A8 looks to be 6.595886607. All right, now just multiply. Multiply by what's in register 2. Multiply by what's in register 1. There we go, $33.98 is what this equals, and I double check, that is the correct answer. That is the amount for the accumulation of discounts. So, if you encountered a problem like this on an actuarial exam, which I imagine you could, it is a subject you should know about, it's definitely handy to know at least the PR formula um, and be able to do this kind of problem solving. I'd say it was a pretty, pretty tricky problem, but uh, it's something to definitely practice.